There are many health supplements that I take every day. They're very safe and they have benefits when you are taking them daily, such as glycine. But there are some health supplements that you shouldn't take every day. And in this video, I'm going to give it a top five that you shouldn't take daily. Do it. The first supplement is going to be NAC. Now, this might be interesting because in one of my previous videos, I did talk about that glycine NAC combo is actually one of the best longevity supplement stacks that you can take because together they boost glutathione levels. And NAC also has other health benefits specifically related to the immune system and detoxification. But while you can take glycine every day with no side effects, then taking NAC every day might have some adverse side effects. The first and one of the biggest ones is the fact that uh, NAC and these antioxidant supplements, they can pretty much just inhibit muscle growth and have a negative effect on the adaptations that you get from uh, resistance training specifically. The way it does so is just attenuating inflammation and the inflammatory response that you get in response to training. NAC attenuated the elevation of inflammatory markers of muscle damage. So that is actually like I'm a, in a short term setting. If you're an athlete, you need to compete very fast or you're just overtraining a lot, then yes, NEC and antioxidant supplements, even a cold exposure after training is great because it speeds up the recovery. But the way it speeds up the recovery is by shutting down the inflammatory response. And that inflammatory response is actually necessary. It's needed to build muscle. It's a signal for muscle growth and to mediate the other strength training related adaptations as well. In some more professional athletes, the NAC supplementation does reduce muscle soreness in the short term. NAC had a likely protective effect on subjective muscle soreness during days of 1 to 4 of supplementation, but it had a very likely harmful effect on days 5 and 6 of supplementation. So NAC in the short term reduces muscle soreness, but it can actually have like an increase in soreness in uh, the like a long term effect use if you take them chronically every day and especially following the second bout of uh, intense exercise. Wait a minute. But NAC is still very beneficial for the other health benefits that it has. The key is to just not use it around exercise. You definitely don't want to take NAC after you've done resistance training and you don't want to take NAC before a high intensity exercise session. The best time to take NAC is on the days that you're not really working out, especially with high intensities. It's fine to take NAC after a cardio workout because that can actually like lower the soreness but you don't want to take it like chronically every day. I usually take NAC maybe two, three or uh, four times at maximum per week before bed, for example, or in the morning where I haven't been ex exercising, where I haven't done any high intensity exercise or I haven't uh, lifted weights around that time. NAC also reduces Dao enzyme, which is the one that breaks down histamine. So uh, if you are someone who is very you know, sensitive to histamine and uh, histamine reactions, then uh, you might not want to take NAC yeah, like that often either. The next supplement on the list is berberine. So berberine is this traditional herb that has been used for centuries in different kinds of uh, medicinal practices. It has a lot of benefits for specifically diabetes management and cholesterol levels and the way uh, berberine does decrease glucose is through inhibiting mTOR pathway as well as inhibiting uh, like insulin and IG-1 levels and uh, in mice at least the uh, berberine does inhibit muscle protein synthesis which you know isn't always a bad thing like it's fine to inhibit muscle protein synthesis it has like some longevity effects as well by increasing AMPK autophagy and you know yeah like slowing down aging in that sense but chronic inhibition of mTOR, chronic inhibition of protein synthesis is definitely not something that you would want to do on a daily basis, at least, because, yeah, muscle is also very vital for longevity. And if you're chronically in this catabolic state of breakdown, then, yeah, you're going to experience sarcopenia and accelerated aging from that side. So you need to balance the mTOR with the catabolism, so to say. And uh, berberine is one of those supplements that you should only take, let's say, on the rest days again uh, or, you know, when you haven't done resistance training. Big mistake. Next supplement on the list is going to be senolytics, like fisetin and quercetin. So senescent cells are considered one of the hallmarks of aging. With age, you see this accumulation of the zombie cells that spread inflammation and don't really contribute to health in any ways. And uh, yeah, the accumulation of uh, zombie cells, senescent cells, is something that uh, could be like a potential therapeutic target for uh, aging. And uh, fisetin and quercetin are one of the most known, mo most easily accessible senolytic uh, supplements that uh, do inhibit 
the uh, senescent cells and uh, have other like anti-inflammatory benefits. The issue is that not all senescent cells are bad or that the senescent cells, they don't always have like a harmful effect on your health. And in many ways, the senescent cells actually also mediate some beneficial things like wound healing. And uh, obviously, you know, there's no way to differentiate between healthy <laughs> senescent cells and pathological senescent cells. So with the supplement, you're just, you know, going carpet bombing <laughs> on the uh, cells and you are, you know, you, there can also be like some collateral damage in terms of the uh, destruction of healthy cells, apoptosis of healthy cells. So, uh, yeah, it's not, you know, with senolytics, you don't need to and you shouldn't try to kill zombie cells every day of the week for the rest of your life because, you know, yeah, you do accumulate zombie cells with age, it's inevitable. But uh, trying to carpet bomb the uh, zombie cells all the time can have like some negative side effects, especially when it comes to uh, wound healing. It's a bomb! Next supplement on the list is melatonin. So melatonin as a hormone is quite an important hormone for anti-aging and longevity because most of the antioxidant repair systems, they uh, work together with melatonin in your sleep and that's why melatonin is such a powerful hormone and uh, that's why it's also important to make sure that you do produce enough melatonin when you are uh, sleeping. Now melatonin supplementation isn't inherently mandatory but there are studies that uh, melatonin supplementation does improve the biomarkers, it improves lipid profile and blood sugar levels as well so it might have like some health benefits even if you necessarily, necessarily don't have like uh, sleeping issues it's a powerful antioxidant in in that sense and the reason why you shouldn't take melatonin every night has nothing to do with uh, the fear of taking a melatonin supplement that it would inhibit your natural melatonin production that's not really true that's actually like a myth the uh, in the studies where they take even 50 milligrams of melatonin they see no changes in natural melatonin production so taking a melatonin supplement is safe so you could theoretically take it every day without any like adverse like there's no negative feedback loop your body will still produce melatonin it's just that you know boosting your melatonin with a supplement may have like this additional antioxidant uh, benefits the reason why you shouldn't take melatonin every day is because melatonin is actually a contraceptive it has contraceptive effects in very large doses so 75 milligram doses it has been found to have contraceptive effects which you know reduces fertility children who uh, are before puberty, they produce a lot of melatonin, which is the reason why they haven't, you know, developed uh, into puberty yet because of the high melatonin levels. After puberty, their melatonin levels drop down and uh, then they go through, you know, the puberty and they develop the sex specific uh, features. So we don't know what are the long term effects of taking melatonin every night, especially in large doses on aspects of fertility and uh, sex hormones it might like reduce testosterone it might you know reduce estrogen or something like that so we don't necessarily know what are the long-term effects and uh, as long as you're not taking like very large doses then you're probably safe if you take like one milligram maybe even five milligrams at mo most it's probably going to be safe but it's still better to stick to either like a very small dose 0.1 to 1 milligram or to like cycle it between the days and not take it every day i'm pregnant and the last supplement is gaba GABA is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain and it has relaxing and calming effects and uh, many people use GABA to improve sleep, reduce stress and fall asleep better. The problem is that excess GABA can actually be converted into glutamate and uh, glutamate is the excitatory neurotransmitter which <laughs> does the opposite. It makes you more anxious, it makes you more aroused and uh, many people who do take GABA then the next day they might feel more anxious and more aroused which uh, kind of defeats the purpose. So in that sense, if you take the GABA supplement, then you're facilitating the requirement for taking GABA the next day as well to calm yourself down. But it's a vicious feedback loop. You take GABA, it converts into glutamate. The higher glutamate makes you think that you need to take more GABA and you know the cycle continues. Like with any other neurotransmitter, if you have too much dopamine from whatever source, the dopamine will convert into noradrenaline and you get the you know stress response and over aroused response. So new neurotransmitters work in very fine balance. You don't want to boost a certain neurotransmitter very high because it's going to be converted into something else. So you don't want to take GABA every night and especially not in large doses. If you do take GABA, then maybe like a very smaller dose, a few hundred milligrams, definitely not more than 400 milligrams and do it like maybe like only a few times a week if you need it. But if you don't need it, then I would much rather, yeah, stay, stay away from taking a GABA. 
but do you want to slow down aging? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.